welcome to another tutorial for the create mod in Minecraft. Now, if I was to ask you what do these two contraptions just here have in common with each other, you might say, well, they're probably two of the most useful devices in the entirety of the mod. You might also say as well, though, that they are really annoying to make because they use these. Nasty little precision mechanisms, which you have to make using a device, a whole contraption just for them, and you're probably only going to need about 10 of them in your whole world. Despite that though, and luckily, we can use exactly the same device to make train tracks. And here is what we are going to be making today. So, as you can see, we've got a couple of belts. One is going to be taking our gold sheets out of this chest. It's then going to pass underneath these three deployers, which are going to poke it with various bits and pieces. It is then going to go around in a loop, just like this, until it is completed, and then it will end up in this box. And that's how we're going to end up with our precision mechanisms. And I'm sure at the moment it has not escaped your attention that we are currently using a rotation speed controller, which you need the precision mechanism to make, so it's a little bit of a catch-22, but that's okay. We'll set it up without this to begin with, and then we'll just use that to speed it up when we want to make our train tracks afterwards. Let's just take a little look at what we're going to need. And you can see that we don't need very much at all, really, in order to make our little device. These deployers are by far the most expensive. They do use brass, as does the brass funnel. So this is a slightly later game contraption. You'll need to have gone to the nether and caught yourself ablaze before you can make brass. You can power it with whatever you like. I'm going to go with windmills because they're cheap, cheerful and easy to use. And over here we've got iron nuggets, large cogwheels and small cogwheels which is what you have to poke your golden sheets with in order to turn them into a precision mechanism. And of course, as I said, we've got a rotation speed controller just so that we can refine things once we've already started making precision mechanisms. But let's make a start. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is just place down a little building block, wherever it is you're going to be making your device. Then we're going to skip six blocks, so one, two, three, four, five, and six then place down another building block, and then just on the row behind those, fill in just one block in with blocks as well. That's just so that you can place shafts up against them, like so. From here, you can then knock out those blocks that you put in, they were just little placeholders, and come round the back. Then pop a shaft just up against that building block, and then we're going to skip three blocks. One, two, three. And then in the next block over, and going one back, place another building block so that you can put a shaft just there. So you should end up with this sort of little arrangement that you can see here when viewed from the front. From here we can then come down and we can fill in these little shafts with our belts, just like so. And then you can take a chest and we're going to place one on this first building block that we put down and one on the last building block that we put down and then we will need another one just here just off the back of this back belt. Just put a little chest on there and then remove the building block that's underneath it. You don't need that one. Then we'll get our little funnel set up. And you only need one brass funnel and that is going to go into this chest that you see just here. Crouch down when you place it. That way you'll have a little arrow you'll see on the side and it's pointing into that chest so that you know that it's going in. Then place an andesite funnel on that one and that one. Then come around the back. Place one there and place one there as well. From here, we could then get our deployers set up. With these, what you want to do is come right up to the belt that you're going to be placing them on. You can't place one over this andesite funnel, that's just going to be in the way, so walk right up to the belt, and then facing into it, click a deployer with your right click onto each of these three little parts of belt as you go across. And you should find that they're all pointing down like that, with their shafts pointing towards the front. That'll mean that we can just power them from the back. From here then, we can just come around the back of them, and we're going to link them up using the encased chain drives. So you can just place those going across, straight across the back, they will link up so that you only need to power one side of it, and all three deployers are going to get powered. And initially we are just going to power this with a belt. So if you just pop a little shaft on the end of that part of the encased chain drive, one in that belt just there, and another one coming out the back, and we're just going to link those two up with a belt. From here, we can then run right the way back around the front again, and these little deployers are going to need something they can actually deploy. And so for that, we will need to get some chutes. We can come just up above them, 
And then you can place little shoots, just one on top of each of your deployers, and then a chest on the top of each of those. You will need to crouch just to stop your chests from linking together. Come back down the bottom, and then what that will do is the chest is just going to feed its contents into the deployer so that it's only going to be deploying one thing, whatever you put in that chest. And from this point now, we are almost ready to get started. So we're just going to link up a little windmill just so that we've got something to power it by. So we're just going to need to go and grab a windmill bearing. And we're going to need some sails. We can just come right up, tuck yourself up into this little corner just here, and we can pillar up a little way wherever your power source is going to be coming from. Obviously, in my case, it just happens to be coming from just here. I'm also going to need a little central block, and I like to use the little wooden ones. Give me a sprucey log. On the top, and then we'll just build up a little windmill off the side of that. Okay, so from this point now we can get our windmill all hooked up to our device. And what we're going to do is we'll bring some shafts, tuck ourselves underneath, and we'll bring those down from our windmill. Then we're going to place a vertical gearbox just underneath those, and we're going to power it up via this belt just here. What we're going to do is we're going to pop a little shaft there and off the back of this vertical, and then we will link those two up with a belt just for now while we get things set up. It might be very tempting at this point to try linking it up by placing a little shaft in here because you can see the vertical gearbox just point in here as well. That's not a very good idea though because the whole point of this is that we want these belts to be able to travel in opposite directions. And if you place two shafts side by side, they will automatically link up and try to push the belt in the same direction. And so make sure that you're only linking it up via this little belt at the back initially. Once we've got a rotation speed controller, we can put it just there. But for now, just make sure you've got this set up. And it should mean if we activate our windmill with an empty hand, we should see only this belt here is moving, not the one at the front. Just come back around the other side. You can see that the deployers are going. That's great because we're using the encased chain drives, but this front belt isn't moving at the moment. But we will get that one set up just now. And we'll do that by placing a little shaft just in there at the front, so that's underneath that brass funnel. Bring it to the back and then we're going to link it up using a couple of small cogs just off there like that. And now they should be moving in opposite directions. There we go. We're moving very slowly, but we are moving the right way. Okay, so next thing we need to do is we need to get set up so that these deployers are actually deploying and doing their job. And for that, you are going to need cogwheels, large cogwheels, and iron nuggets. And you will need quite a good supply of them as well, because you're going to need five of each for each of your precision mechanisms. So it is quite a sort of material intensive process. But what we're going to do is we're going to come to our first chest. Into that one, we're going to place 64 little cogwheels. The next chest we will place 64 large ones and in the next one we're going to place 64 iron nuggets they will go down and they will get grabbed by the hands as you can see here and they're now ready to deploy each of their little components from this point now we can come over to our chest that's going to start everything off and we're just going to place in one little gold sheet just like so that is going to come out extremely slowly because of how slowly this is running at the moment we're just going to get it started off so you'll see our little gold sheet is going to get poked with a little cogwheel. Then it's going to get poked with a big one. As soon as it gets poked with one, this little iron nugget that you can see here, I'm actually going to grab it off. So I've got an empty hand and I'm going to wait for this one to come through. You could actually grab it at any point in this process. I just like to wait until this point. Then I'm going to snatch him off like so. And you can see I've got a little incomplete precision mechanism in my hand. And the reason why we do that is because we need to set up a filter with it, but it's quite hard to find in JEI. It doesn't seem to come up at all trying to find an incomplete precision mechanism. And so in order to set up our filter, we'll need to come into the filter by right clicking on it anywhere in space. Then we can take this little incomplete mechanism. We can just place it just there. You won't actually lose the mechanism. That's fine. It's still sitting there ready to be used. It doesn't get taken away as an item, but it is in the filter. So what we can do now is we can come out of this and we can place our little filter 
all into the funnel just there, and now that's going to take in any incomplete precision mechanisms that go through. For now, though, we're just going to place this one back into the chest, and what it'll do is it'll go through, it'll have its second component, and it's going to go around five times in this little circle that you see until it gets finished, and then it'll go into this chest here. So we'll just watch that one as he goes through. Yay! There we go, that's a finished precision mechanism. It'll go straight past the brass funnel because that's only taking in incomplete ones, and it'll be in here ready and waiting for us. And considering the fact that that process took absolutely forever, we're going to immediately speed it up by making a nice little rotation control mechanism. So, in this case, because I'm in Create, I can of course just kind of grab one. So, Just to show that is the actual recipe that you need in order to create these rotation speed controllers. There's the little precision mechanism that we have just made. But once you've got yourselves one of these, we can come around the back. We can switch off the windmill for now. We'll knock out this little belt at the back because that's too slow for us. And instead we're going to make a little hole just underneath there that you can see and we'll place down our little speed controller just there. So that we can now put another little vertical gearbox just off down to the side, so that these are now connecting up like so. Then we can just place a large cogwheel on the top, like that, and that is now going to connect into this belt. You can see immediately this little sort of casing appeared around the cogwheel. That's just to say that that is now being used. And so what we can do is we can set off our mill again, and everything is immediately moving a lot faster. Everything's also immediately moving a lot more backwards as well. So what you can do is you can come down to your little rotation controller. If you hover over the 16 just there, which it sort of automatically starts at, hold down the right button. That will bring up this little interface, and then you can see on the far side over here, you can either choose to go clockwise or you can choose to go anti-clockwise. In this case, we want it to be going clockwise, and we want it to be going a bit faster, so we'll set it up to about 32. That'll be fine. There we go, if we come back round. Now those belts are moving much faster, the deployers are going to move much faster, and we can come over to our chest. We can load it up with gold sheets, and we'll get to making lots of precision mechanisms. And it's stopped. If you come back to your machine and it's looking like this, so you can see our little deployers are working, but they don't appear to be doing anything and nothing is moving anymore, that's because they've run out of whatever it was they were deploying at the time. As I say, this is a very material-intensive process, and so if, this, if you come back to it and it looks like this, you need to top your chests back up again. So what we'll do is we'll pop our cogs back in there, and we'll pop our iron nuggets in as well. Now one thing which I did was I put in 64 gold sheets, which is an awful lot of gold sheets. And because, if you have a look in here, precision mechanisms can't stack, so you'll find that this one little single chest can fill up quickly if you're doing an awful lot in one go. So what you can do is just sort of double it up. We just pop another little chest on the end, so that we've got a double chest. We can then fill that up with our precision mechanisms and get everything moving again. Another issue that you can find with this is that if you have forgotten with your funnel on the end to crouch when you placed it, you might find that things are just popping off the end of the belt. Just replace this one, making sure to crouch so you've got that little arrow that's pointing in. And also, if this isn't going fast enough for you, don't forget this is a speed controller, so you can speed it up and slow it down as well. If you go way high, you can just overstress the thing, so it's just going to sit there saying, I'm too stressed, you've not got enough power for this, in which case you'll have to slow it back down again. But you can just pick it and choose however fast you want it to go. Let's go at 64 for a little bit. There we go, so once everything has gone through, you'll have a chest that looks a little bit like this. You'll notice that you don't get everything back that you put in. So I put in 64 gold sheets and I've only got 45 precision mechanisms back. That's because it only has an 80% chance to go through. Sometimes you'll just get a pack. what's not necessarily a piece of junk, they're all useful bits and pieces, but it's just not a precision mechanism. 
So what about once that point, though, where you've now got 45 precision mechanisms? You're pretty unlikely to need any more of them, then it'd be worthwhile setting this to do something else, and we'll set it up instead for train tracks. So what we need to do is if you come over to your little deployers, as long as you're wearing your goggles, you'll be able to see what it is currently deploying. So this one obviously says item cogwheel 48. It's got 48 cogwheels in it waiting to go. That's got 48 and this one's only got 16 iron nuggets. What you can do though is with an empty hand, right click on the hand and then it'll take away whatever it's got in there. You want it to be poking like this to say, I'm currently empty, I've got nothing to deploy. Do that for all of your little hands so that the machine is now effectively empty. There is nothing in there that it can use. And we'll set it up instead with iron nuggets in the first chest and in the next chest. And then you'll be able to see he is now deploying iron nuggets instead. And then we're going to completely remove this deployer and we're going to replace it instead with a mechanical press. We'll do take our mechanical press, we'll just right click onto that in case chain drive. So that's now set up. And now if we put some little stone slabs in here, you'll see that they're going to go through. They'll get poked and then smashed and then they are now becoming little train tracks for us. Don't change anything else. Leave all of your filters set up for now. You never know when you might want to make some precision mechanisms again and it's not doing any harm as well as with the chest and shoot up there. But that's all you need to do, just to convert this over to making train tracks for yourself instead. And I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. It's a reasonably easy little contraption to make, and it's nice that it's got several different functions. Anywho though, happy Minecrafting everyone, and I will see you again soon. Bye bye!